All right, let's come back home and a couple of results to unpack. Uh, let's do that with James Garish from Shore and Partners. James, a very good morning to you. Uh, of course, we did have uh, NAB out with its uh, results. Uh, dividend there of 78 cents a share. That's above expectations. Um, and uh, what's well, cash earnings there, 7.1 billion. Uh, what's your assessment? Yeah, good morning to you, Andrew. It looks a, an in-line result. I actually haven't had time to go through the detail of it, but in terms of the headline numbers, you may mention of cash earnings were in line with um, uh, consensus expectations. The dividend for the full year was 151. Um, that was one cent above the uh, above consensus for the dividend. Um, so it looks all it looks all okay from from NAB's point of view in terms of the headline numbers for that result. Well, overall, how are you looking at the banks at the moment, uh, particularly, I guess, given exposure for the property market, um, where, those, um, where those interest rates are going and clearly how that's going to affect their net interest margins? Well, a couple of things at play there, obviously, the property space being weak as a as a headwind for banks but you may mention of higher interest rates which are actually a positive for their net interest margins and that's what we've one of the themes we've seen in the last um, as banks have reported we're actually seeing particularly on their exit margins uh, for the second half they've improved pretty materially so they are passing they are reaping some of the benefits of higher rates so we're seeing improved margins which equals uh, improved profitability for them so um, put that to one side obviously housing is another issue but at the moment they're saying um, you know all the banks that we've spoken to post results are saying that um, you know the consumers at the moment are in very good shape that that will change as interest rates start to bite and a lot of current borrowers roll off variable mortgages into uh, sorry fixed rate mortgages into higher variables um, but still for now they're not seeing any stress across their book and I think we've got a you know, you, you, we can look forward and um, sort of muse around what's likely to come. But at the moment, banks, are, the asset quality is fine in terms of banks. All right. Um, elsewhere, a property related to REA Group. Uh, what are we seeing there? Yeah, some numbers out from REA this morning. I've only just had a quick uh, run through those. A couple of things that caught my eye. So they're guiding to um, uh, higher cost growth, so high single digit to low double digit cost growth. Um, to my understanding, that's slightly above where um, we were looking in terms of costs to be. They did say that they still expect uh, revenue growth to be above cost growth. So um, that is why well, they, they didn't give any revenue forecasts. The market is looking for revenue growth of 9.7% for the full year. So um, yeah, they, they, they're still guiding for that um, level of revenue growth. Uh, the EBITDA for the quarter, I think, was 174 um, that just flashed across my screen. Um, yeah, that compares to um, a bit above 700 million for the for the full year. So um, uh, it looks a little bit light on in terms of the quarterly number. And they also talked to uh, listing volumes down about 16% in October. Um, and they painted a little bit of a more negative picture in terms of um, activity in the, the, the property space in recent times, given the impost of higher interest rates. James, let's uh, jump into commodities, specifically gold. Uh, we're seeing the price rise again. In fact, it um, pushed above 1700 US an ounce. Um, ha and we have seen um, significant positive movement as far as the gold producers, the share price is concerned there. Um, what's your view? Yeah, bullish view here, Andrew. So uh, rightly point out gold went through 1700 an ounce overnight. Uh, it's all on the back of some weakness finally creeping into the US dollar. So the US dollar was down half a percent. If you think about the what's played out over the last six to 12 months or so has been you know, a more aggressive uh, US central bank raising rates at a quicker rate than other global central banks, that creates a bigger in interest rate differential, which um, is then you know, really supportive of the US dollar. As that uh, interest rate differential um, reduces, the US dollar should come down. And as we saw last night, that's supportive of gold prices. So um, just in terms of the gold price versus the, the equities, obviously gold prices have been weak. Um, but since their March high above 2000 an ounce, they're down about you know, 17, 18%. Gold, gold equities are down um, 30, 40, 50% in some cases. So they're a leveraged way, gold equities are a leveraged play on the gold price. Um, and uh, you know, they should do better than this bouncing gold. So I expect some fireworks in the gold stocks today. Uh, I note Barrick Gold that we own in our international portfolio was up around 7% in the US overnight. So 
I'm um, hoping for a similar move. Probably not the the, the magnitude that um, Barrick has done overnight, mm. um, but in Newcrest and some of the other gold plays today. What What are your favourite gold plays locally? Yeah, we've got a, a painful position that we've held for a while in Newcrest, um, so we've been sticking with the the, the large cap there. Um, and I, we think St Barbara is quite interesting at these current levels. There's a bit of corporate activity playing in the, uh, playing out, or lot, could play out in the area that they operate in WA. Um, so that would be worth a sort of a, a deep value contrarian turnaround um, speculative play in the gold space. And then um, we're also fans of evolution, uh, but we don't have a position there. All right. So you are playing at the big end. Um, not interested in the explorers at this point, given the road ahead? Yeah, I mean, it's, it all comes down to risk reward, Andrew. So, mm. you know, you're playing the smaller parts of the market, the explorers, etc. You've got a bucket load more potential upside but you've got a bucket load more risk as well so um it depends you know that the 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 target of the particular portfolio that um we're allocating the position to so um you know our flagship growth portfolio is a large cap portfolio so newcrest fits in that quite well Uh, the emerging companies portfolio is sort of x100 companies that have got a, a high risk profile higher bang for buck um, so some Barbara fits in that one. So, um, you know, you've got to be conscious about risk. Don't just look at the upside. Look at the risks that um, go with, with, with any stock that you're buying in portfolios. James, good one. Thanks for joining us from Shore & Partners. Thanks, mate.